want to welcome you to worship on this beautiful Easter Sunday morning. Doesn't matter what the weather is, it's a beautiful morning because Christ is alive. I was thinking about a time that a Sunday school teacher asked her class, uh, what do you think the first thing Jesus said when he came out of the tomb was? Well, it didn't take long before a little five-year-old girl jumps up and says, surprise! <laughs> Here he is, surprise. And to the unbelieving world, it was a surprise and continues to be a surprise as God reveals himself and people begin to understand, yes, Jesus is alive today. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we offer praise and thanksgiving for the privilege of celebrating the resurrection of your Son, Jesus. We thank you for being with us, scattered as we are, while we worship today. Help us to be aware of the unity we have in the Holy Spirit. Reveal to us how the resurrection of Jesus continues to shape our lives. Amen. Amen. Well, with our staying at home congregation, we don't have a lot of announcements to make. Uh, <clears throat> would like to share a little bit about <clears throat> how you can help continue our ministry as we proceed with the offertory here. Uh, please go ahead and mail your checks to the church office, or you can call the church office and uh, see how, what you need to do to sign up for a direct deposit type of a thing. That's becoming increasingly popular in our day and age. So, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's uh, turn now to our opening hymn. <clears throat> Jesus is alive, and we want him to Shine, hallelujah, hallelujah.
I'm going to turn to the Word at this time from Acts chapter 10, uh, reading verses 36 through 43. This is a message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea. In the beginning, Galilee, after John preached his message of baptism, and you know that, G that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him to life on the third day, and then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us, whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one of all prophets that all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Turn to Colossians chapter 3. Just the first four verses. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the reality of heaven, where Christ sits in the place of highest honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of of earth. For you died to this life, and your real life is hidden with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to turn back over to Roger here. Yeah. 
you to I invite you to uh, join with us in the call to worship this morning. It's taken from Psalm number 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let the congregation of God's people repeat. His faithful love endures forever. Open for me the gates for the righteous enter, and I will go in and thank the Lord. Those, Those gates, gates lead to the presence of the Lord, Lord and the godly enter there. Enter there. I thank the Lord for answering my prayer and saving me. The stone rejected by the builders has now become cornerstone. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ the Lord is risen today. Praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Jesus, who is crucified, 
He has an heir. He's been raised from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with a great joy as they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. As they went, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they ran to him and grasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee. They will see me there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. For your Holy Spirit. Quickening our hearts to how your word touches our lives today. Changes our lives today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, there are differences in the details of the resurrection given in the four Gospels. I think that that was such a powerful moment in history and in their lives that attention to detail seems to have got lost in the wonder of it all. Matthew's account is used in this year's lectionary reading, so I'm following Matthew as he understood the events surrounding the greatest moment in human history. For nothing has had greater impact on the human experience than the rising from the dead of our Lord Jesus. By his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus has taken away the sins of the world. To have your sins removed, all you need to do is trust and have faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. In this account, we have Mary Magdalene and another Mary coming to the tomb. When an angel from heaven came down and rolled the stone away from the entrance of the tomb. This seems to be accompanied by an earthquake. The guards saw all this and they just faded away from fear. The combination of the earthquake and seeing this mighty angel just was more than they could handle. The angel's first words to the women, don't be afraid. The human reaction to seeing angels is often fear. The shepherds were afraid when the angel appeared to them as they were watching their sheep announcing the birth of Jesus. Fear of God Almighty and his angels goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden in reality. Adam and Eve were afraid and they hid themselves from God after they had sinned. God continues to tell us in my words, paraphrase, Hebrew paraphrase, don't be afraid. I am a good God and I want to help you become all I created you to be. God wants us to run to him, not from him. I think God would tell us not to be afraid of the COVID-19 situation. We need to respect it. But to cower in fear before it belies our faith and trust in God. We need to do all we can, of course, through personal hygiene, good nutrition, good rest periods. But really, to buy up a six-month supply of toilet paper is carrying things a little too far. Fear not. I am with you. an oft-repeated theme in God's Word. Let us never reflect, but often, let us never forget, but often reflect on the fact that God is with us today.
tomorrow, and all eternity. What does it really mean to you that God, the creator of the universe, is with you right now? The angel said, I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He's been raised from the dead just as he said it would happen. Come and see the body. See where his body was lying. You see, the angel was trying to encourage the women to believe. You're looking for Jesus. He's not here. See where his body was. Jesus is alive. The women were invited to see where his body had been. There was a place, but there's no body there. It was missing. By the way, the stone wasn't rolled away so Jesus could get out. The stone was rolled away so the women and others could see that the tomb was empty and believe. On at least two occasions, Jesus demonstrated the ability to enter a room when the doors were all locked. It would have been easy for him to leave the tomb while the way was blocked by a huge stone. Let us also reflect on the fact that the tomb was empty and is empty. Is empty. It is possible to miss Jesus this Easter if we keep our eyes on the tomb. Jesus is alive. What does it mean to you that Jesus is alive? What does it mean to you that Jesus' Holy Spirit is alive in you? In you. Jesus is not dead in the tomb, but is alive and by his spirit living in you. Hallelujah. What a powerful thing to get our minds around. Praise God. For he has done and is doing marvelous things. Then the angel told the women to go quickly and tell the disciples that he had been raised from the dead and is going ahead of you into, to, into Galilee. You know, it is important to get the message out that Christ is alive and that we can meet him. Jesus told the disciples he would meet them in Galilee. He told them that in Matthew 26, 32. And the angel wanted to be sure that the women would remind the disciples. <laughs> there had been a lot of emotional stuff happening lately in their lives, and it would have been easy to forget that Jesus wanted to meet them in Galilee. Sometimes it's easy for us to forget that Jesus wants to meet us on a daily basis. He wants to develop that close personal relationship with us in order to guide us through the struggles we face in this life. The women were still frightened but filled with great joy and they ran to tell the disciples. And I think it's so gracious of our Lord to meet the ladies as they went. Seeing him, they ran to him and Jesus told them again, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee and they will see me there. Go and tell is the word for everyone who meets the risen Lord. Go and tell. The good news is just too good to keep hidden and it must be shared. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Tell the disciples to go to Galilee and they will see me there. Where can we tell our friends and neighbors to go so they can meet Jesus? How do we help someone who is struggling to open their hearts to the truth 
of a loving God who wants to help them. I think we help them by being available to them, by loving them, and sharing the story of our relationship with Jesus. I clearly remember the spring of 1974. I was running cattle with my Uncle Ed down in Decatur County. We would bought some 20 head of first calf heifers. Their calves were big, many needed help during delivery. Also, it was a wet spring in Decatur County. It seemed that every morning I would go to check the cows and often see one off by herself with what looked like a big mud ball behind her, lying on the ground. I would wade through the mud to where she was, not knowing if the calf on the ground was dead or alive. It was a frustrating season for me. I got sick and tired of looking at mud. I'm not sure why or what I needed to go talk to my pastor about, but I drove to Kellerton later that morning, and we talked about whatever I needed to talk about, I guess, and knowing Walters are, we, we would add prayer before I left. And on the way home, I was amazed at how green the grass had become while I was concerned with the mud. One of my favorite quotes from Dale Carnegie, two men looked out from prison bars, one saw mud, the other stars. As I was looking at the mud, God was bringing another beautiful spring into our world. This particular Easter season, it's easy to look out and see the COVID-19 and the problems that it has brought. But COVID-19 is really only part of the world around us. And COVID-19 does not have the last word. God does. Just as the tomb did not have the last word, Jesus did. We as children of God can stand up straight, fold our heads high, and look the world in the eye because Jesus is alive and our God reigns. He reigns in our lives, in our church, in our nation, and in our world. There is so much darkness in the world, even though the light shines forth, we need to continue to be about our Father's business and let our little lights shine. Let us pray for those who don't have, have not seen the light. Let us think of ways we can demonstrate God's love to inform those that are in darkness and to encourage our brothers and sisters in faith. That's what a personal testimony does. It encourages our brothers and sisters and it helps to inform those who are still living in darkness. Jesus is alive, my friends. The tomb is empty, and that makes all the difference. May God bless you with his presence on this Easter Sunday morning and every day following. Amen. 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 I invite you to take a few moments and quiet and reflect on what Easter means to you.
Gracious Heavenly Father, we are a thankful people who worship you this Easter Sunday. We have so much for which to be thankful. We have the privilege of coming to the throne of grace where we find strength and help in time of need. Lord, we need to have help with this coronavirus plague. Grant wisdom to the researchers as they seek cures and vaccines. Grant health and good judgment to the doctors, nurses, first responders, and others who are on the front line of caring for those who are sickened by the virus. Grant protection, O oh Lord, to our families and friends. May there be a great time of rejoicing over the demise of this plague in the near future. We're thankful for the privilege of living in this great nation and state. We pray for wisdom and understanding for those serving in government. May they guide us down paths of righteousness, O Lord, for your glory. I pray for those, O Lord, who are out of work, and I thank you for your provision. Guide us, precious Lord, into ways that we might be able to lend a helping hand to those in need. May the Easter message be communicated with both word and deed through us. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now we want to turn to one of my favorite Easter hymns, Up From the Grave, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
the grace of his son Jesus, and the power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, keeping you in love with one another and in love with him who first loved you today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.